and welcome to the Crystalton Parents Guide to Google Classroom. Um, this little video and the presentation slides available as well, I just give you a little overview and introduction to what Google Classroom is, um, how your child can use it at school to help with their online learning and homework, and also to help you help them navigate Google Classroom and the affiliated apps which we use as a school to implement our home learning and online provision. So, first of all, what is Google Classroom? And um, think of Google Classroom as essentially a digital online classroom where you can share assignments, homework, send messages, and um, speak with private messages to the teacher, um, share work, give revision guides, everything really all in one place. So this is really a one-stop shop for students who are working from home for whatever reason or for homework and it enables them to contact their class teacher very easily and very straightforward. So essentially, all of the students at Christleton have been given a secure login and password, which is unique to them. They should know this because it's the same school email and password as they use to log on to the school computers and everything else we have signed up to as a school. However, if they don't know this for any reason, they can speak to their form tutor and find out that way. So how to get onto Google Classroom, first of all. First bit of advice, if you can, always use the Chrome browser. This will work on other browsers as well, like Internet Explorer, but Chrome is usually the best because it links into the Google Classroom quite well. So on your browser icon, you need to just type in Google, go to the Google homepage, nice and straightforward. And once you're on there, they'll give you the option to sign in. If you're using a home computer, it might be that you already signed in on your own private account, so you'd have to sign out of that first. Okay, but once you've done that, you can click sign in. Then you quite simply put in your child's Google email address. So that is again that unique email address they've been given from the school and their password, the same password for when they log into school computers. So it's in this format, they'll have their student ID and then at christletonhigh.co.uk, click next. Obviously that'll move you on then to a point to put your password in, click next and then you'll log on. Essentially, this means you've logged onto the Google account and all of the apps, all the education apps that we've signed up to as a school, you can access them through this account. And you'll be able to see because the profile will change, it'll probably just be a letter unless your child has put a picture there, but you'll see that you're logged in. If you click on the little nine squares in the top, sometimes called the waffle or the Rubik's cube, you can actually have a quick link to all of the apps or the most used apps that your students will probably be using. Okay, uh, obviously today we're focusing on Google Classroom, but if you go into the next slide, there are actually a whole host of different things. Um, realistically, the most used ones for our students is obviously the Google Classroom, which we're looking at today, but also Google Docs. That's how they produce Word documents or similar to Word documents. Slides is kind of like Microsoft PowerPoint. Sheets is kind of like Microsoft Excel. Um, and forms they might use to complete quizzes and things like that. They're the most used ones. And the good thing about these is that you don't have to download or pay for any of the Microsoft Office account. You can use these directly online through the internet browser and it saves them all in the cloud. So they're always saved, they're automatically saved, so students can access them more easily. Um, navigating the classroom. So if we go back onto our Google Classroom, you've clicked your the waffle tab in the top. You click on Google Classroom, and then that will take you to a screen which has a Google Classroom, and on that screen, they'll have all your classes. So on this one, you can see there's two, but if you imagine, your child will probably have a class for each of their subjects at least, and maybe extra ones for extra activities. So you have to find the one that's relevant to what you're looking for. Once you find that class, you'll get a page that looks a little bit like that. The bottom part of this is what we've put in to give you an idea of what everything does. But essentially, all 
classes will have the same three options at the top. There is the stream, which is almost like a wall, which will put all of the class updates in. Anything the teacher posts or says or assigns will go onto that stream. Then you've got classwork and people, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail. If you click on the classwork tab at the top, you'll see not just any assignments have been set, but also all the lesson materials that teachers may have put on at the end of certain lessons. So you can essentially find everything that that class teacher has ever put on with regards to slides, activities, worksheets, they'll all be on there, usually formatted into units um, and classes. Um, again, at the bottom, there's a bit of a guide. You'll get these slides as well, so you can have a look through in a bit more detail. But the main things really are, if you click on the right the topic down the side, you can then search easily. Um, and then you can also see any due dates you may have on the Google Calendar. You don't need to use that, but it's one way to do it. And it will basically organise all of the assignments and all of the class details quite nicely for you there. The good news about this is that you can access it anywhere. So students can log into this on, on their phones, on tablets, on the desktop computer. If you want to use it on phones and tablets, things like that, you'll need to download the app. Um, the apps are free. You can download them in either the Apple Store or on Google Play. And the good thing is then that students have access to this Google Classroom all the time. They can get alerts on their phone so it's easy to keep track. Now, if you do have any questions, anything this isn't very clear, then please let us know. But most importantly, have a look yourselves and speak to your child to see if they've got any questions for it. If you do have any questions, if it's a subject one about a certain piece of work, then please contact your subject teacher via the normal method of the website or the form tutor if it's to do with passwords or getting logged on as a whole. How to upload your work on Google Classroom, that's really straightforward. It will say once you click on the assignment how to do it and what you need to do. But there are a couple of clips here which you can watch which will show you exactly how to do it. Now if people are doing work which isn't on the computer, so you haven't got a file to upload for your assignment, there's another easy way you can do that and that's a simple case of take a photo of any written work the child's done and then they can upload that as a photograph to the Google Classroom as well. Most teachers would accept this as a type of submission because we can still read it and give it marks and feedback as we would normally. Okay, thank you for listening. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of an introduction. As I've said before, you'll have an access to these slides as well. If you can, get on it, have a little play and ask us any questions from there. Okay, thank you.